Uh, my name is Jody Roberts, and I'm part of Art and Climate Action, which is a collective of artists and arts professionals based in the Bay Area. Um, we hold community meetings like this the first Friday of every month, and we very much appreciate your joining us. Uh, key to ACA's or Art and Climate Action's mission is letting our colleagues and friends know about resources and tools that will make their move to sustainable practices easier. And with that in mind, I'm thrilled to have Jay Cho, Laura Lupton, and Sammy Owen here to discuss Barter.Art, Barter which is a peer-to-peer -peer resource sharing platform that's building a circular closed-loop economy for museums, gallery studios, and other art spaces. Just a little bit about our speakers um, before I hand over the mic. Sammy is part of Craigslist team um, by day, and I'm happy to say that he's also an organizing member of Art and Climate Action. Jay is a co-founder of Barter, as well as director at Spencer Brownstone Gallery. And Laura is also a co-founder of Barter.Art. And in addition to being a founder of Galleries Commit, an advising founder of Artists Commit, and um, a director of Barbara Gladstone Gallery. If you all have questions as we move along, please put them in the chat um, and we'll leave a couple of minutes at the end um, to answer your questions. But I'd love to turn things over to Sammy to get things started. Thank you. Hi, uh, thanks Jody. Um, thanks everyone for being here. So as Jody said, my name is Sammy Owen. I live in the SF Bay area. And uh, for the last 10 plus years, uh, I've worked at Craigslist as a software engineer. Before that, I worked in various art galleries in San Francisco as a preparator and assistant. I did a lot of art handling, installation work, and um, delivery uh, for private clients. So I, I came to be working with Art and Climate Action through Haley Mellon, who in October of 2020 introduced me to Jay over email, and I learned about this project he was working on called Barter. And we had a pretty long email back and forth about uh, the genesis of Craigslist and e-commerce and circular economies, closed loop supply chains, things like that. And when I say circular economy or closed loop supply chain, what I'm referring to is a way for people to use products until the true end of the product's lifespan. And specifically what we're talking about today is an internet enabled consumer to consumer closed loop supply chain. Uh, in the case of Craigslist, as most people probably know, uh, it could mean one consumer rehoming like a free couch or a plant or anything really to another consumer. And in fact, we even have like a motto at Craigslist and it's Craigslist, no crap. Okay, maybe some crap, but it's your crap. And it works. Um, Recently, there was a study in like 2018 that when Craigslist is being used by a population, uh, it can help reduce municipal solid waste. So that's things going to the dump basically by two to 6% uh, per capita in that region. But this also brings up an important thing that came up early in the conversations I was having with Jay, which is that due to the variety and enormity of stuff on Craigslist, it was a site that really wasn't working well for New York City galleries and artists to sort of reuse and repurpose and create their own circular economy with their own supplies, things like pedestals or installation materials or AV equipment. Um, and so we also talked a lot about the difficulty of categorizing all of that equipment um, in a way that the people using the website could accurately and easily find them. Um, and one of the things that Jay brought up really wonderfully and aspirationally about Barter was that it would be a place that because the users would be speaking the same lingo, the art world lingo and jargon, that they could more easily meet and find each other's material needs. Uh, another thing we talked about was that the pseudo anonymous nature of Craigslist, it didn't really lend itself well to organizations and individuals in New York City at the time, sort of banding together for repeat transactions, which is really important because it just speeds things up and it helps keep that closed loop economy moving along. Um, early on, Jay described a really elegant approach to this and it was, and I'll let Jay and Laura expand on this in a moment, but it was rather than connecting people like Craigslist does, which is a consumer to a consumer in a direct line, what if you could draw circles around those users or those consumers um, and 
because the idea of a circle is open-ended, it doesn't necessarily mean a geographic radius like New York City or the SF Bay Area, even though it can, but it can also mean like an industry in the specific jargon or needs or materials of that industry. So that's a little background on the really early conversations that I had with Jay and Laura about this site way back when. Um, the amount of thought that's gone into Barter conceptually about who it should serve and how to best accomplish those goals, it's really immense given how slick and simple the site looks. Um, it's an incredible resource and Jay and Laura, I'm really grateful that you're here to talk with us about it today and uh, to have this discussion and I'll hand it over to you. Hey guys, uh, Jay here with uh, co-founder of Barter with Laura Lupton. Um, could I start sharing my screen, Jody, is that all right? All right, um, I'm just gonna use this as a landing page for now. Um, thanks so much, Sammy, that was a really kind of you. <laughs> um, well put. Um, so Barter is a peer-to-peer -peer resource sharing tool uh, for the arts. Um, I've been actively working on it for about two years now with Laura, um, who's on this call. Um, the very basic goal of Barter is to help individuals and organizations in the arts um, reduce waste, uh, recover valuable space, and lower operating costs um, associated with production and shipping material. Uh, by sharing information and connecting people with similar material needs like us on this call. Um, but I guess to start off, I'd like to touch on the origin of Barter a bit. Um, the idea came pretty unremarkably about 10 years ago for me. Um, one of my first uh, art world jobs out of college was art handling for a small gallery in Chelsea, New York. And um, I was really struck by the amount of temporary material that our industry demands. Um, I remember we had a large storage unit just chock full of, you know, perfectly usable frames, AV equipment, lighting equipment, and uh, obviously crates, um, all usable, all valuable, uh, just collecting dust. And um, as we all do, we were all constantly fabricating or buying new versions of the same thing, you know, just over and over again while storing new stuff or just, you know, throwing it out or breaking it apart. Um, and it also, you know, became quickly obvious that um, pretty much this, this was pretty much universal um, across the art world, whether you're an art gallery or museum or studio. Um, so, you know, the very, very basic question I remember asking myself about it was, um, you know, what could happen if everyone in our community in the arts shared information about what they could do without, you know, like that was it, you know, what if we shared information, you know, what if, you know, transparency, um, and that was a while ago, but that idea kind of haunted me for a few more years uh, while I was just kind of working and, um, you know, just kind of was in my mind and I realized that it could, it could be, um, it could manifest in some sort of platform. Um, and about two or three years, I set about to kind of build it because no one else was doing it. And um, in the past two or three years, there were a number of other cool art and sustainability organizations that emerged, including, you know, our host, um, ACA, and then GCC, Key Culture, Art Switch, and last but not least, uh, Galleries Commit, an artist commit founded by Laura, um, which is where we actually met and before joining forces on Barter. Um, so that's the kind of genesis and basic concept of Barter. Um, and now I'm just going to go through some basic functions of Barter, if that's cool. Um, but, uh, So this is just a landing page, you know, it's pretty, like Sammy said, pretty slick and clean. I just wanted to keep it that way. Um, sorry, one second. Um, so using Barter is, you know, super simple. Um, you are posting information on material you'd like to offload and searching through information on material you need, you know, basically posting forms and searching forms. Um, using it is 100% free for anyone. Um, we operate as a nonprofit, um, thanks to uh, our wonderful fiscal sponsor, Haley Mellon and Art Acres. Um, and we really wanted to get as many users as possible because it's, you know, it's more effective that way. You know, we reach critical mass, there are more eyes on objects, there are more people giving stuff away um, and you really build um, an ecosystem and economy that way. And so we really wanted to reduce as much friction as possible. Um, and we found the, uh, any sort of fee to be probably the biggest friction creating thing. So it's all free, anyone can use it anywhere. Um, and it has just two basic functions, post and source. Um, this is the post landing page. Um, you need an account to post anything, um, but you can source through objects without an account. Um, I'm just simply just post something. Um, 
So this is, you know, we're all familiar with forms, right? Um, you just fill everything out, red asterisks are required information. So let's just say test crate. Um, again, non-asterisk stuff are optional. Um, and it, it accommodates different metric system, um, imperial system, obviously. Um, uh, auto populate list and insert a photo. And that's it. Um, if you go back to my posts, you will see that an item is posted. Um, let me just find it. There you go, test crate, it's on this line. This is everything that you've posted um, and you can sort it based on these item descriptors. Sorry, my internet's a bit slow today. Um, you can also export the list uh, for inventory purposes. You can also uh, click into it and edit it. Um, so that's my posts, uh, posting items. Um, the other feature is source. You see, this is the most recent post, it's right here. Um, if I'm someone that is interested in crates, I can just sign up, uh, view the post, and you'll see the full contact information of who posted it, that's me. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, regarding the search feature, you know, we kind of narrowed it down. We st really streamlined the search to three basic things, uh, keyword, category, and the location. But if you wanted to narrow it down further, we added an advanced source page. Um, that it has all the criteria that you can just kind of narrow it down. Um, um, so I run a gallery in the Lower East Side in New York, and I've been using it um, obviously for the past year. And, and I'm actually excited to report that this thing works. Um, we managed to get rid of four pedestals, um, a crate, some canvas to an artist. Um, we even sold a shelving unit. Um, and you know it's still in its early stages. We are still looking to get people on it, but um, you know I was really happy to find people um, needing stuff and getting it and sourcing secondhand. Um, so yeah, it works, um, and that's basically it. Uh, pretty simple. Um, let me just go back to the top page. And at the about page, you can find some information about us, uh, what it is, the context of the project, um, how to use it, um, some press that we've received and all the organizations that are have supported us. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the origin of this tool was just me, an art worker, like basically just trying to get some free stuff for work. Um, but as I was building it, and I think Danny mentioned this, you know, um, I realized that the community element is one of the most important aspects, you know, um, like, yes, we can get free up space, reduce waste, um, get things for less, but, you know, I really just wanted to start a conversation and get some people together to see if we can make some you know, cool changes on that to how our industry operates. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Laura, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I don't think I have much to add. I think you did a great job of walking through the site. Um, I would just say that for like my own use of the site and what's been really um, interesting or effective for me is how it has given me a much better sense of community with other people in the art space, like people that have reached out to me to um, take a piece of AV equipment that I've posted um, or some fabric that I've posted. It's, I think that you feel this with Craigslist even when you post, like you end up meeting somebody, they come to pick it up. Um, but in this space, I'm meeting somebody or I'm having a conversation with somebody that's also part of our sector. Um, and that's been a really nice way to feel more kind of intergallery or inter art space connection within the like our New York City community as well. Um, and I think that a lot of the things that have been interesting around talking about expanding this or making the tool a really active space of inter-community exchange um, are talking to groups that are able to think about trying to activate a larger space. So right now you'll see most of the listings we have are either in Brooklyn, the New York area or Los Angeles, the LA area. Um, and those are partially because that's where the communities that we already know from Art and Climate Action and Artists Commit and Galleries Commit are most active. Um, but we see a lot of potential and the tool is available, the tool is available and operable in any geographic location. 
Um, it's really just a matter of having a community that signs on and posts so that it can be a really active and populated place of exchange. We do have a few um, questions coming in. Um, how many users does Barter currently have um, and how many of those are, are active? Or can you tell them? Uh, yeah, we have about 300 users currently um, in the past year. Um, obviously, that's something that we're working to expand. Um, interestingly enough, you know, when I was first building this, I thought that artists and engineers would just flock to it, and um, and that would be the pro the, the initial uh, batch of users. But interestingly, you know, I think a lot there's a really urgent need for larger organizations and bigger businesses to offload material, and so. Even though the numbers are small, we have like some of the biggest organizations represented in our user pool. You know, I can't, I don't know if I should name names because I'm not sure if it's like a company sanctioned use thing. Um, but, you know, a lot of big museums, like the biggest, top biggest galleries you can think of are on Barter right now. Um, um, it's hard to gauge um, the level of use, you know. Um, I can't, you know, we're not really trying to track too much dat data, obviously, and we don't have the means to do that. Um, so I'm not sure, like, how many people are like going on it on a daily basis or weekly basis and, and clicking through it. Um, but just speaking for, again, for myself and my use of it, it seems like, you know, um, people are interested in getting things for less, obviously, and, and, and galleries are interested in offloading. So, um, well, I guess we'll see. Yeah. Um, Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. In terms of, you mentioned that, um, a lot of materials currently are being posted from LA or New York. What is the best way to grow communities outside of those areas, say the Bay Area, yeah. anywhere really? That's a really good question. And that's something we're working on. Um, and this is, I mean, this conversation is what needs to happen, right? Um, like I can't come into somewhere like Colorado and just be, and just say, you know, this is bar to use it. I mean, it'd be great if there were, <clears throat> excuse me, um, existing networks already, you know, um, and existing conversations surrounding this stuff that we can be introduced to um, and sort of see this idea in that community. Um, so if you guys have um, existing networks outside of, you know, um, LA, San Francisco, New York, um, I'd be happy to, you know, um, talk mm -hmm. and get that going there, yeah. Yeah, I think that one of the main focuses we've had recently has been working with um, existing networks in cities and that's part of why LA and New York both have the most activity. Um, we've worked with, um, there's a group in LA that's emerging called Museo Cycle, which is a museum based group um, that has been doing outreach to different LA based museums. Um, and we've also been talking, collaborating with them about how to make certain things on the site work effectively that address some specific either privacy concerns or like loading dot concerns that might come up with the institutional museum space um, to make it easier for museums to participate in an initiative like this. Um, so LA has, there's just been a lot of interest. And I think part of that is because they have an existing tight network of museums and tight network of people that are interested in reducing waste and kind of a climate conscious approach. Um, and so similarly in New York and Jay and I are both based in New York. We have a lot of connections to the New York gallery scene um, and art scene here. But we've also been in talks with um, groups that are in London, some other areas of Europe um, and some areas in Canada that are interested in kind of like using their existing networks to encourage group use of the site. Because um, again, like one person using the site is important, but it's like one person and their local community all using the site at the same time. So they could, there could be someone else that the material is going to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that is, yeah, right now I feel like we're really in a phase of doing that outreach, getting more people to know about it, talking to more people, and especially talking to people that have um, access to like larger communities to just get people on the site. I think it's something that like everybody needs and everybody is constantly talking about. Like we need this tool, we need to be able to share pedestals, um, AV equipment, projectors, uh, crates, like how can we use these? And so it's just a matter of like, Okay, the tool, like we built the tool, now just like how do we get everyone on it to be using the tool. Right. Um, one question, California specific, um, from a member of Art and Climate Action. So she, Danielle says, also one of the big issues with manufacturers and retailers um, giving away things like paint is that in California, um, there's Prop 67, which relates to certain materials that may be carcinogenic. Um, 
is barter able to bypass this since it's individual to individual as opposed to coming from a company? Mm. Yeah, oh, I mean, you know, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just thinking, you know, the, the, the one way, I mean, there's a lot of similarities, but um, the common thing with Craigslist is that, you know, it is peer to peer, you know, we're not overseeing any of the transaction. And I don't think even if we wanted to, you know, uh, the liability of that has always been something on our mind. And um, I, I mean, on, to be honest, I haven't looked into that, um, but I, because it's again, peer to peer and direct, um, it sh I don't think it should be an issue. I mean, th I mean, that's sort of why when you post an item, you should, you know, um, fill out as much information as possible. And that thing, including, you know, that, and also just like museum security stuff. I mean, that kind of protocol should be uh, made transparent in the post. Um, and there's areas where you can do that. So. Um, Katie asked, I'm curious about use of this site for production needs and equipment um, versus crates, et cetera, for higher value pieces are um, where there are potential insurance issues. You mentioned that Jay, in the beginning, you were thinking of this specifically in terms of art production and artists using it. Yeah. Um, so just going back to the the idea of circles that Sammy mentioned, you know, um, expanding on that a bit, you know, I think for me, I mean, ACA is a circle, right? This conversation is a circle. Um, the, the greater circle is the art world, let's say. Um, and then there are circles, there are sort of Venn diagrams kind of circles, like, um, you know, production is one, fashion is one, you know, when I first imagined this, I imagined like, why stop at the art world? You know, there are other creative industries with semi-similar material needs and, you know, it wouldn't take that much to retrofit barter to accommodate those items either. Um, so uh, we would like to get there um, after, you know, this kind of uh, beta in the art world. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sort of digressing, um, but, um you know we can i'd love to talk to you further about that um i haven't really you know we haven't really like gotten there yet <laughs> um yeah that's fair yeah i think that part of that question though is uh like production for like production i think he like film production or other things but also like within the art space like production whether that's a projector or like if one gallery has a scissor lift or a forklift that they own and they would be happy to let the person across the street borrow that um, if it was on a temporary thing, but that might have additional things like an insurance requ uh, insurance requirement or a loan agreement requirement. Um, and my answer to that part of the question would be, um, again, that barter serves as like a connection point for peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, but what is the, like the details of arranging that exchange is between the individuals. So we would be like, here's the item, here's the listing, it's available. Um, I think that Jay mentioned this, but you can post things that are available to give away for free. You can also post things that are available for sale, or you can post things that are available for temporary loan. Um, and if something were going somewhere on temporary loan, then it would just be at that point between the two of you to figure out what a loan agreement could look like and what those terms would be. The way that you would do if you were requesting a loan agreement from anywhere else is just because you found it on Barter, we were the point of contact to make you realize um, that that material existed and was available for you to reach out to. So like, yes, you can't have insurance values. It, would, it wouldn't go through barter, it would go through just your own paperwork that you would do offline. Sure, and if I actually could just, it was my question, Katie speaking, hi. Um, hi. Um, I, I actually did mean like production items like in the art world and that a gallery would use, like I think Laura had mentioned um, uh, earlier, like AV equipment and things like that. I just, in was wondering more like, not in terms of liability for barter but like for using it for broader purposes like for crates for storing artwork if you've seen so far that it's more active in the areas of like production items versus like crates which would possibly leave like a gallery space or an artist yeah. more liable to reusing those types of goods um so that's more the direction that i was kind of wondering uh, in that question. Um, I think it's a bit early for us to kind of examine like trends and patterns of use. Um, so I don't really have an answer for you. Yeah, um, pedestals have done yeah. really quickly. Like pedestals are posted. Yeah. And most of them have been claimed pretty immediately or not immediately, but they've now been claimed. 
um, and crates have been posted. So like Lots of crates. Yeah, miscellaneous, yeah. miscellaneous art supplies. Like um, I posted a bunch of blackout fabric and there was a lot of interest in that. Um, like a projector screen that was posted, people had a lot of interest in that. I mean, yeah, so those are like, I think, case studies or anecdotes of what's gone so far, but because we're still yeah. in early phases and like things are just getting posted, I don't know if that's representative of what major trends will be on the site. Like I think that if somebody had a projector up there and it was a nice projector and it was available for loan and it was like in the Lower East Side or in Chelsea and other people could use that, I think that, that would get a lot of like active use and maybe that would be going through loans and maybe that would have a small loan fee but that loan fee would be kind of a friends and family situation not like going to i just i say that because i know that working in shows where i do video work when you rent from like the rental houses like projector rentals are not designed for two month rentals so they end up being really expensive you instead have to buy it you buy these really high-end projectors and having one that was kind of more shared across the sector would be yeah. the beneficial like access point yeah, it seems particularly helpful in those cases, like, you know, I put up shows and all of a sudden I need five screens, like five televisions, and we're not going to buy five televisions for a three month show. Um, how do I access that quickly and temporarily? Yeah. So a lot of questions about expanding the geographic reach, um, which I, I'm going to interpret as like a enthusiasm to to get involved and to support and help grow your network and the expand the use of barter um in terms of interacting with laura and with jay what's the best way to do that or is it just to get on the site itself um yeah i think to support so to support barter in general then i think there's a few things that would be great one just like be an active user of barter and keep coming back. We're definitely in early phases where we are just getting content on there, just getting people to come to it. So like start checking Barter first when you need material and start thinking about posting things on Barter when you have something to offload. And if you go there once or twice, like don't give up on us if it's not there yet, like keep coming back because we're going to continue to try to grow this network. We don't want to like lose people because you come once, you don't find the perfect thing and you think it's not useful, like bear with us and help us grow the community. Um, if you are part of a community where you have access to a larger network, um, and if there are ways that you could promote more community use within like your area, then that's great. Please do that. And if it makes sense for you to reach out to us to maybe do that in collaboration or talk about ways that we can really foster your local network, um, send us an email. I'm ll at barter.art, j is jc at barter.art, um, or just info at barter.art. You can find that on our website too. Um, and then we are actively building this tool and we're it's free to use we're committed to keeping it free to use um but if you're interested in supporting us and making this a sustainable ongoing possibility and giving us options to improve the technology and improve the tool um you can sign up to be a sustaining member with a annual subscription fee that will go to helping us um, make sure that we can keep this going and there are also several tech improvements that we're interested in making um, that will require some more like um, investment and in development work. And if you're interested in seeing Barter improve and becoming even better, also had access to ways to help us find some of that development, then we would very much love to hear from you. So feel free to let us know. Okay, couple more questions. Um, I know we're running out of time. Um, a lot of smaller gallery and exhibition space find um, having their own storage just prohibitively expensive. Have you thought about partnering with an art storage business to create shared space? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> conversations are ongoing, I take it? No, yes, yes. Uh, the conversations are ongoing. Um, it's again, early stages. Um, that, that definitely occurred to us early on, you know, like the natural progression of the concept is you know, could there be a drop off, drop off location for objects? You know, was sort of a middleman for this. Um, um, we were kind of hesitant at first, honestly, because I'm not sure if that necessarily like reduces, you know, you know, transport CO2, for example, um, and also just like the the overhead of running, um, over overseeing the physical site is not within my capacity or Laura's capacity yet. 
Um, so, but you know, we're definitely maybe if there's maybe there is a, a larger company that is interested in, in, in going into sustainable practices that would be yeah. um, open to something like that. Um, and might manage even, themselves, yeah. Yeah, it might be great even thinking about it region to region because if so many cities have sort of arts districts um, where things yeah. are grouped together and it's a common space in a district like that might make a lot of sense. But I love that you guys are yeah. thinking of it holistically. It's not just about material waste, but also transportation of objects, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, definitely. And it's not all. It's also not just um, you know uh, shipping companies and storage companies we're in conversation with. You know, we we had a sort of test run collaboration with uh, Freeze LA Art Fairs, for example. You know, which are big, create a lot of waste bands in a very short amount of time. So um, we are kind of thinking across the board in all these different use cases for material, which are many. Uh, um, but more on that later, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And just one more clarification on the search function. You can search within the site for what's already posted. P can you also search for something that's not currently on the site? Yeah, uh, that's a good question and one we get a lot. Um, that's like one of three major kind of tech features that we want to implement that we don't have the means to right now. Um, we, you know, basically need funding to improve um, our features at this point. Um, but you know, I understand the desire for like an alerts feature, you know, where you can get an alert for something that has been posted um, that you that you need um, or something like that. And also, we are, we are interested down the line in implementing like an internal like in house chat feature, so you don't have to like necessarily go off to the email third party um, communication thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're we're on we're on it. <laughs> Sounds good. I and mean, one thing that we are doing right now, Jay, is um, you can follow us on Instagram at barter.art on Instagram and we're posting recent listings there so that instead of coming to the site you can just kind of like see it in your feed um, and we have been posting want ads through those stories so if you send us something that you're looking for then we can make a Instagram story post and it stays live on our stories until it's fulfilled yeah I'm so we're, I'm so bad at Instagram that we're not going to bombard you with posts so um if you're not um it'll just be like once a week tops <laughs> All right, well, clearly you guys are like thinking through future problems, problems, opportunities. Um, I love to hear that so many people are already using it and to see the postings that are up there. Um, internally, we, we constantly talk so much about, oh, these crates, oh my God, the pedestals every time, to, you know, make them, break them down, throw them away, remake them. And thank you for coming up with a solution um, that's gonna let us reduce that waste. Absolutely. All right. Well, if you all have any questions for Laura, Sammy, or Jay, um, you can contact Art and Climate Action through our website or info at artandclimateaction.org. Um, you can contact Barter directly at info at barter.art. Um, and we're happy to hear your feedback and would love to see this resource grow. So thank you all for being here. That's great.